Hello everyone and welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to cover another Biomed Basics video. This time it's going to be about screwdrivers. There's many different types of screwdrivers and you think you might know the uses for all of them, but maybe you don't. Let's go ahead and check it out. Screwdrivers are going to be at the base of any Biomed's toolkit because it's going to be one of your most utilized tools. The thing is, is there are various types of screwdrivers that everybody probably should know, but the fact is that many of them don't. And a lot of the names are mismatched and a lot of them are being used for the wrong purpose. So let's go over some of the varieties of screwdrivers right here. We have to start out with a flat blade screwdriver. Flat blades are one of the oldest type of screws and they're still pretty common in many types of devices today. There's different sizes for screwdrivers and those sizes are usually attributed to a number like number two, number three, number one, number zero, number zero, zero. And flat blades, I don't believe they have a size. Maybe they do. I think they measure them in millimeters nowadays. So it'd be 2.5 millimeter, three millimeter, and that would be your blade width. Now there's two types of um, screwdriver grinds. This is a taper grind, which you can see it goes all the way to the point. And then there's something called a flat grind, which means that it doesn't taper and it's less likely to cam out here at the tip. See this one here, you can see it's clearly tapered all the way down. Now flat blades are very common in different lengths. I usually keep a stubby and we have long ones like this. Now, what do you think a large flat blade screwdriver like this could possibly be used for? It's long since said that uh, flat blade screwdrivers are not pry tools, but almost any good biomed I know thinks of these ones right here as the ideal pry tool size. Look at that. So flat blade is your main one, but it's not the most common. It's the oldest one. Next would be your Phillips. Phillips in the United States is more common than the Reed and Prince, which you find in other locations, but Phillips is also called a cross point screwdriver. See that? Now this one is a special variety because notice that the shaft is covered with a plastic. That plastic means that this is an insulated screwdriver. And this here is a Phillips two by six inch. And this is an insulated screwdriver. So is this. So that means that you can use these for work on electrical and anytime you get dings and stuff in the insulation means it now has an attributed weak point and that means that that screwdriver is probably going to be removed from service as an insulated driver because any weak points could mean electricity can come out or arky spark so that would be your two main varieties you got the flat blades you've got your cross point Let's see, one of the other main ones that we are going to use as a biomed is called a Torx. And Torx is a six pointed star bit. Torx come in sizes like T10, T25, T30. And one of the interesting things about Torx is that the larger the number, the larger the Torx. So a T10 is going to be much smaller than a T25. You see, I've got all sorts of different torques. Let's see, what other screwdrivers do we have? One of the main ones that I like to use in my toolkit are gonna to be these um, hand-me-down type of screwdrivers. These ones you can get at trade shows and all sorts of different places. The cool thing about these drivers is that you can flip them over and you get a, a cross point at one side and you have a flat blade at the other side. Pretty cool. And I've got larger varieties of that right here you can tell I've used and abused them now one of the things you should realize about drivers in general is that they are going to be a consumable over years of using them you will start to wear away at the sharp edges and the sharp edges are what actually grab into your fastener so as drivers get older you have to get rid of them you have to throw them out because the chance of them camming out which means they lift out of the fastener and they round over the fastener comes much, much greater as they wear away. 
Your flat blades, if you see that your flat blade is twisted in any way, you need to get rid of it because a twisted flat blade leads to an incline and that means that it will cam out, which means it pulls out of your fastener and it boogers up the fastener and boogers up your screwdriver a little bit further. Now those are the three main drivers that we use. We also have hex or Allen. Now hex come in a variety of different sizes. There's metric and standard and hex is just that. It's a hex bit and six sided hexagon. And this will fit inside fasteners. These are used all the time on medical equipment. And one of the things I find myself doing in the field is if I have a metric hex, which is much more common for medical equipment, I will use my Torx to fit into that spot. And one of the cool things about using Torx, if you have some Torx bits like this, if you ever have an Allen head that is rounded out, you can put the next size up Torx in there, smack it in the, in the Allen, and either the smacking it into the hole loosens up the threads or the Torx grabs in on a rounded out Allen and you can drive it out. So I do keep extra Torx around. But uh, these are Allen bits. They come in metric and standard SAE. And SAE, it, they are in fractional, unfortunately. So get good at your fractions, guys. The next set of screwdrivers that you should know are called precision drivers. This is a precision driver kit. And I have some other precision drivers. Let's see. Yep. So this is also a precision driver. And one of the attributes of a precision driver is that it's for light duty. They usually have a spinny cap. That's so you can put pressure while you're spinning it. And these use a much, much smaller size bit. See, these bits are tiny compared to a size of a standard driver. So those are precision drivers. Usually they come in a kit of some sort. Like you can see, this is a kit. And one of the final screwdrivers that a Biomed should be aware of is going to be this guy right here. This is a Weha kit, but these are called security bits. Now, most of the time you're going to use standard screwdrivers, but sometimes you're going to need security bits. And security bits will have a little piece of metal that will prevent a standard screwdriver from functioning. So you notice that these hex right here have a hole in the middle. That's because the, the fastener will have a little bead inside the hole that prevents a regular Allen from getting down in there. So this comes as a kit. I recommend everybody gets a security bit kit. You never know when you're gonna need it, and when you do need it, it's a showstopper. I do know that some of these flat blade security screws right here, these ones are used on some Steris devices. We've got some security Torx, we've got some security Allens, a little bit of everything. There's even some security Phillips or Crosspoint. Those are kind of rare. Normally you will see security Allens and security Torx. Those are gonna be the most common. But this is called a security bit kit and I recommend everyone get one. Uh, you're gonna use it eventually, maybe not today, but eventually. Let's talk about some other drivers. In my tool kit, my actual tool kit, I have a variety of other types of screwdrivers. Now this is a multi-bit driver. And you can see right here, I have a collar where I can select ratcheting in one direction, ratcheting in the other direction, or stationary. Now this one by Milwaukee is one of my absolute favorite drivers. And I think I have its little stubby cousin here someplace because they make these also in a stubby version so between the stubby and this one right here this is all the screwdrivers that I need look I got flat blade I've got some uh, square point I've got some cross point just a little bit of everything and to get these bits out you slide them towards the tail and it's got a magnetic retainer in the collet nice nice driver right here so this is a multi-bit driver Standard quarter inch shank, so all the bit kits that you get, you can fit those bits right here and they will work just fine. I recommend everyone get a multi-bit driver. So instead of carrying all these screwdrivers in your tool kit, you can carry one component. Makes your life so much better. Now one of my other favorites that I use, this is a 
uh, screw driver, electric driver, and the way that this works is uh, I have a lock and unlock, and then there's an activation button, and when you rotate it, it's got a gyro inside, and it rotates the driver in one direction or the other. Now, one of the cool things I like about this is not only its sleek profile, it's just a little bit bigger than a standard driver, but it's also low torque. And the reason low torque is important because when you're starting a bunch of fasteners, sometimes fasteners want to cross thread. And this right here prevents that from happening. It uses a lithium ion cell, quick and easy to charge up, and it lasts forever. This is a Craftsman lithium ion. I think it's a three volt. Um, but not much to say about it. I don't even know if they make them anymore, but this is my absolute favorite power driver. But I have a new favorite one coming up. And this one here would be the Milwaukee Fuel. They have a new version of this driver, which has LEDs right here along the, um, the collet. This one here has it down here at the low point. But this is a M12 driver and very high torque, allows you to do a lot of work really quick. The feature I like most about this one is actually its lowest torque setting. Because if you are setting a bunch of screws, you can hear it's a lower RPM. If I fully depress it, I can set a whole bunch of fasteners. It does not tighten them down all the way, which is what you want. So I can use this driver with some of these multi-bit organizing clips, and I have everything I need to do most of my work. So this guy has become one of my favorites, especially if you gotta get a lot of work done. And both of these are kept in my tool bag, although it does add quite a bit of weight. It allows me and somebody else to start working immediately. And since I do a lot of training, I often give a driver like this to whoever I'm training while I'm doing the other side, and we're both working in tandem. So for training purposes, I keep both of these on me. Adds a wee bit of weight, but that's okay. So one of the other drivers isn't really a driver at all, but I do keep this in my toolkit because I use it for so many things. This is called a scratch all, or just an all, A-W-L, and it's a point. And you can use this for so many things. You can use it to lightly separate cases. You can use it for cleaning out crevices. There are so many functions for a scratch all. And a nice heavy duty one is always a plus because you don't want to bend them. Once you bend them, you might as well get rid of them. So you can use this for lining up fasteners. So let's say you're putting a panel on, you put this in the hole through the panel and you line it up, you fasten on the other side. And that way there your panel stays straight and all your holes are lined up. There's so many uses for one of these. It's I use it a lot like a taper punch, which a taper punch you use for centering. So very neat thing, I keep it in my toolkit. So anyway guys, I do believe that, that that covers most of the drivers. I would recommend you keep one or two of these little drivers right here, the precision drivers. And I keep a number one Phillips and a number two Phillips, which where's my number two? Ah, I've got one right here. So that's a number two Phillips. And I keep a large flat blade. Oh, and I also keep a stubby Phillips. So those are in my toolkit. I also keep a small flat blade. I keep my precision flat blade. And I do keep a large flat blade. All of these are in my toolkit. And most of these other drivers are just redundant. You know, you never know when you can need another one. Sometimes you're gonna need tiny, tiny Phillips like this guy right here. This is uh, the size that you'd use on, I don't know, maybe eyeglasses which is why I have this kit from Weeha. What a cool kit. It goes tiny, 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 tiny. Matter of fact, I doubt that you guys can even see that. This is a flat blade, believe it or not. And that is how small it is. You can barely see it. So if you need to work on electronics like cell phones and stuff, I use this Weeha kit right here. Works fantastic. But anyway, guys, that pretty much wraps up drivers. Just remember your flat blade, your cross point, and your torques are going to be the main ones that you're going to use on medical equipment. There are Allens and stuff like that, as you can expect. But for those, I use multi bits and that takes care of them all in one spot. Anyway, guys, I know that's a long winded rant about 
screwdrivers, but trust me, these are the basis for any Biomeds toolkit. You should get to know them, use them, even though people will tell you like, hey, don't use them as a pry tool. Yeah, right, we all use them like that. It is what it is, guys. Please like this video. Go ahead and stay tuned because I've got other Biomed Basics video. That are gonna, we're gonna be talking about hand tools because I didn't know that so many people didn't know how to use them. So let's go ahead, let's talk about them. I'm gonna create a series of videos. This is video number two in the series. We're, we got a couple other ones coming up over the weekend. All right, guys, thanks for watching.